Hello, welcome to Small Business Truths, where we tell you the real truth about what's happening to small businesses right now, in particular in New South Wales. Well, joining us today is Wayne Wanders, the real CFO, with some more news on the business grants that some of us can apply for in New South Wales. Hi, Wayne, welcome back. Thank you, Angela. Good to be here today. Now, we're talking specifically today about those people who don't meet the criteria, and I think you call them outliers. Yeah, if you look at most of the, the of the three grants out there, you've got the COVID-19 business grant, you've got the job saver, and you've got the micro business grant. Right now, the eligibility rules are pretty clear cut. They say you need to have lodged a 2020 income tax return, and you need to compare a two-week window in 2021 with a two-week window in July, June 2019. Now, the first category that misses out, if you've created a business after um july 2019 you therefore don't have a comparison period you may have a 2020 tax return but then again it may put you in the wrong level of grants because the grants are broken up between 30 and seventy five thousand dollars and seventy five thousand dollars and above right so those those are the are those are those the one-off payments the one-off grants that you're talking about well that impacts both whether they fit for micro business grant whether they go for job saver whether they go for the COVID-19 business support it impacts any of those grants because right now they can't apply to service New South Wales I had one woman I dealt with last week who applied to service New South Wales and they said she started her business in um, November 2019 proved that her revenue is above $75,000. We put some comparable numbers there for her. But Service New South Wales said, sounds like you're going to get it. But the poor guy at the other end of the phone call has got no authority. There's no advice. There's no rules from Treasury or Service New South Wales as to what they will sign off on. So she was just given a number and told to wait and we'll get back to her at some point in time. When they clarify some of these um, outliers and where they might sit, yeah, and, and like she's just one example. I've got other examples. I've got people out there that went on holidays in June and July 2019. They're a sole trader. Then they come back to this year and they go, well, hang on a sec. I didn't work in 2019. Of course, I've, you know, if, if I had have worked, I would have got this income. What's the scenario? Or you've got other businesses like people who are in 2019 were in, impacted by the, the, flat, the floods, the droughts the bushfires, all those different things that impacted a whole range of different people meant that either their 2019 or even their 2020 year was really not reflective of what's happening. So Wayne, I, just to jump in there really quickly, even if you were trading pre-2019 and even if you have done your 2020 tax return, COVID hit us in the financial year 2020. You know, there was a, the last couple of months of that financial year, we were already in the global pandemic. So if you were in lockdown or your business shut down because it was that kind of business that wasn't allowed to trade or be open, you might fall underneath that 75K. Or even under the 30K. So, Or even under the 30K. And again, not your fault. So there are, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to work out these groups that wouldn't fit within that mould or fit that criteria, why have no allowances been made for them? Well, I think one of the things you've got to understand here is that Services New South Wales, great organisation, but they're not really designed to deal with businesses, the volume they're dealing with. If we go back to when JobKeeper was out, the ATO came out with a great little um, information set about all of these alternate income tests Every accountant out there basically had that alternate income test brochure on their desk and just went through and ticked, okay, which one do you fit into? And let's do the calculation. Unfortunately, as far as I can determine, Service New South Wales and the Treasury have yet to actually formalise a document with that. I think they've retained a big four chartered accounting firm to do that. But let's face it, they issued the press release for these grants on the 13th of, of July. It's now the 2nd of August. And all those businesses that don't fit the mould have still got no clue what they need to do to apply. And just to highlight again, this any of this financial assistance is just going to be around the forced hard lockdown period. Correct. So a lot of angst going around for what will be a short time frame for government that they're going to give out money. So the, the problem for them is not going to be 
a long-term issue that they have to change their whole lives or their whole systems around. But these businesses that are struggling, that can't get money through because they don't fit the exact black and white criteria, they could be feeling this impact well into next year. Yeah, well, like simple examples. I'm dealing with, say, a hairdresser who's forced to shut down. The moment the restrictions are lifted, they'll be back on business and have cash. I'm dealing with someone else that's in the the pet space. Not only were they forced to stop working, but because some of their clients paid in advance, they had to refund some money because they couldn't do the work. Now, both of those businesses have not had any money since the 26th of June. It's now the 2nd of August. You know, they're working out how they're feeding their kids and they're probably surviving on their partner's income or some cash coming through there. Or I know in one particular case, hitting up friends and family for money to pay the bills to feed the family. Yeah, or, or they're, they're using what's left of the space on their credit card, which, you know, has probably been used quite heavily anyway because we've had 18 months of a global pandemic and business, we know that business has been down overall quite a bit from you know, pre-pandemic years, which we can only really isolate that to, you know, the calendar year of 2018, because once 2019 started to happen, you know, things were all over the place anyway. So it, it's, look, it's unusual circumstances. Now, very quickly, because we will run out of time, because these are just short bites, um, people can reach out to you and uh, get a four-hour free session, but only if they book you through Realise Business. Correct. And they can ask for you, Wayne Wanders. Yeah, if they ask for me, I can then give them, as a qualified accountant, I can help them with the accountant's letter um, to help them. And I can help them formulate how to actually apply for these grants. And hopefully by the time they do it, the New South Wales government has actually issued some guidance on these alternate tests and we can actually formalise letters. Fantastic. And just that number really quickly is 9545 five nine double zero and it's realized business and you need to ask for wayne wonders thanks very much for joining us wayne that's all right thank you for having me